Hey everybody, it's Mr. Carr again. Today we're going to be talking about 4-1 day two. Um, the goal with today is talking about what's called with our inverse trigonomic functions. Okay, so we're looking at inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent. So the idea with all these inverses is that they are kind of the, they're going to undo our sine and cosine and tangent. Okay, they also help tell us our angle. So again, inverse sine, uh, if theta is an acute angle and the sine of theta is x, then the inverse sine of x is the measure of my angle theta. Okay, so if sine of theta is x, inverse sine of x is theta. That's what we're saying with that one. Same thing with the rest of those. Okay, so how we use that again is we find missing angles. So we look at our first example here. So you use a trigonometric function to find the measure of theta, round to the nearest degree if necessary. You're going to set these up just like you would for a normal right triangle trigonometry. Based on my angle theta, I want to label my sides as opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent. I always like to start with hypotenuse, so that's going to go right here. And then from my theta, that means this is opposite, this is adjacent. So when I look at this, I ask the question, which ratio is going to use my opposite hypotenuse? Those are the two things that I know. So that's going to be sine. So I'm going to set this up as the sine of theta is equal to the ratio of 12 divided by 15.7. Once I have that, I can just rewrite this. Remember, if sine of theta is equal to that, <clears throat> that ratio of 12 over 15.7, theta is going to be the inverse sine of 12 over 15.7. Okay, so that's my inverse function here. Now, uh, this is just going to go in my calculator just like that. So I plug that in and I'm going to get 49.8 degrees. Or because in this case it says to round to the nearest degree, it'll just be 50 degrees. Okay. So that is my basic version of just finding a missing angle. Here we want to use an angle of elevation. So the chairlift at a ski resort rises at an angle, oops, rises at an angle of 20.75 degrees while traveling up the side of a mountain and attains a vertical height of 1,200 feet when it reaches the top. How far does the, the chair lift travel up the side of the mountain? So when I do this, we're trying to model this with a triangle, okay? So the idea is that uh, with my angle of elevation, so from this horizon, from the straight line across, the chair lift is going up at 20.75 degrees, okay? The... Uh, the height of the mountain is 1,200 feet. We want to find what is the distance of this right here. So we're not doing inverse here, but we are just finding stuff with angle of elevation is the idea. So now in that scenario, because it's the height of the mountain, we can assume it's a right triangle. Then set it up with our normal trig steps. So this is going to be my hypotenuse. This is my opposite. And then this is adjacent. The trig that I'm going to use to, that uses opposite hypotenuse is going to be sine. So the sine of 20.75 is equal to opposite 1,200 divided by x for my uh, hypotenuse. Just like we did before, when I go through and solve this, I multiply both sides by x and I divide out. Then I end up getting 1,200 divided by the sine of 20.75. That's what's going to go in my calculator. So I'm just going to go ahead and type that in. And when I do that, I'm going to get 3,387. 0 0.05 feet. I didn't say what to round to, so I'm just going to go to two decimal places. Okay. So angle of elevation. Uh, this is another one that's going to deal with that. It's related to what's called the angle of depression. Okay. The key here is how we model this. So a person on an airplane looks down at a point on the ground at an angle of depression of 15 degrees. The plane is flying at an altitude of 10,000 feet. How far is the person from the point on the ground to the nearest foot? Okay, so when we look at this, the idea is that if I have this kind of a scenario here, my person is at the top of the airplane. Connect that a little bit. Okay, so here's my person who's in the airplane. They look down at an angle of depression. An angle of depression is the angle it makes for this person to look down. So this is 15 degrees. And they look down and they notice this point that's way out here. The key with this kind of a model here, well, let me finish this part. Off. It's the airplane is 10,000 feet in the air. And because we're going directly above the ground, we're going to model this with a right triangle. The key with angle of depression is 
the person who looks in from the plane looks down at 15 degrees would be the same as the person looking up from here. So the angle of depression is going to match up to that angle right there, that angle of elevation of that point. So that's going to help us when we put the 15 inside my triangle. And now I'm going to find out the uh, what I'm looking for, which in this case, it says, uh, how far is the person from the point on the ground? That's going to be this side right here. So just like the previous problem, I'm going to um, label this my hypotenuse. This is going to be opposite, and that's adjacent. So again, I'm going to do sine. Sine of 15 is equal to opposite 10,000 divided by my hypotenuse x. And again, I'm going to multiply both sides by x, divide by sine 15. So I'm going to get 10,000 divided by the sine of 15. And now that I have that written out, I'm going to go ahead and put that in my calculator. This one's going to be rounded to the nearest foot. So I divide that out. I get 38,637 feet for this one. Okay. Again, angle of elevation is the same as the angle of depression. That's going to pop up in this one as well. I want to make sure that, when I, so let me, let's look through this first. A sightseer on vacation looks down into a deep canyon in, using binoculars. The angles of depression to the far bank and the near bank uh, are 61 degrees and 63 degrees respectively. So this person here is looking down an angle of depression to the far bank, 61 degrees to that one, and then 63 degrees to that one, okay? If the canyon is 1,250 feet deep, how wide is the river? So the key here is trying to find this, this length of Y here. But the in order to find that, I'm actually going to model this with two separate right triangles. And I want to find this distance here because Y is going to be the difference between those two values. So here's my first triangle. I'm going to, I get to like trace this one here. Oops, that, here we go. Let's go here, here, and there. Here's my, to the triangle that's modeling to the near bank. So I'll pull that off to the side here. Okay. And that triangle had an angle of depression that was the 63 degrees to that one. So 63 degrees is here, which means that angle of depression is the same as this angle of elevation here. And that's going to be 1,250 feet. Okay. My second triangle is going to go right here. That's to the far bank. Okay. So again, I'm going to take that, pull it out to the side here. This one has the angle of depression to the far bank is 61 degrees. So that's going to match up to this angle here is 61 degrees. And then that's still 1,250. Okay. In this case, I want to call it, so this is X. That's what's given. I want to call this length Z here. Okay. So the idea is that Y is going to represent the difference between Z and X. So I just need to find both of these and then subtract the two. So when I set this up, I'm going to do, uh, we got hypotenuse in both cases. 1250 is going to be opposite those angles there. And that means I'm left with adjacent for those two. So I'm going to do tangent in both cases here. If I set this up, I have tangent of 63 is equal to 1250 divided by X. Okay. When I go through to solve this, again, just like before, I'm going to multiply both sides by X, divide by tangent 63. So X is going to come out to 1250 divided by the tangent of 63. Plug that in my calculator, I'm going to get 636.907. Okay, when I do my tangent of 61, that's going to be this one now, is 61. That is going to be 1,250 over Z. So again, I multiply both sides by Z, divide by the tangent of 61. So it's going to look like this, 1,250 divided by the tangent of 61. Okay. I multiply, or I divide those two numbers out, I get 692.886. So my final answer for the length of Z, okay? Z here is going to be the difference. So I'm going to take 692.886, subtract 636.907, and I'm going to get the width of the river to be 55 point. My rounded off is going to be 0.98 feet. So there's my final answer, okay? A little bit extra, but again, that angle of depression is going to match the angle of uh, elevation. Last concept to cover here. 
And that's going to be what's called solving our right triangles. Anytime we talk about solving a right triangle, we mean we want to find all the missing sides and angles. Okay, so all missing sides and angles. Okay, so for the first page, uh, first case, I'm going to find the last angle because that's going to be a lot easier to find. So round, round our side lengths to the nearest tenth and angle measures to the nearest degree. Based on this triangle, I'm going to find just this last angle, H. We just have to do the fact that in a right triangle, these two angles are going to be complementary. So I know that I can, to find my, the measure of angle H, I could just take 90 minus 41.4. So when I do that, oops, I get 48.6 degrees. But since I want to round it to the nearest tenth, it'll just be 49 degrees. Okay, so that's my first part. Everything else is just going to be doing our trig ratios. So based on 41.4, we're going to have opposite. This will be hypotenuse, and then this will be adjacent. I need to set up two different trig ratios. In both cases, I'm going to include the 28. That has to be a part of it, because that's the only known value of the side. So I've got here, I've got opposite hypotenuse. That will be my sign. Here, I've got adjacent and hypotenuse. That's going to be cosine. So those are my two ratios I want to set up then. So I'll have the sine of 41.4 is equal to opposite F divided by 28. And the cosine of 41.4 is equal to adjacent H divided by 28. Okay. From there, we can just do, in this case, I would multiply both sides by 28 here. So 28 times the sine of 41.4 is equal to F. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and plug in my calculator. I do that, and I'm going to get F is equal to 18.5. That's me rounding off to the nearest 10. Here is going to be the same thing. I'm going to have 28 times the cosine of 41.4 for H. So again, I plug that in my calculator, and I'm going to get an H is equal to 21.0 when I round that one off. Okay. And then my last example, kind of the same idea. Again, solve a right triangle. I need to find all my missing uh, pieces here. But when I do this one, make sure the first step I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find my missing sides because I have two of my sides. If I have two sides that are known, finding this third side, which I'm going to call C because that's what we, lots of times we call our hypotenuse is C. We're going to set this up with Pythagorean theorem. So step one, I'm going to do 9 squared plus 5 squared is equal to C squared. Okay, so 9 squared gives me 81 plus 25 is equal to C squared. Okay, add these up. I'm going to get 106 is equal to C squared. And then I square root both sides. It does want the nearest tenth for this one. So I do that and it's going to round to 10.3 for C. Okay, when I find an angle measure, that's what we talked about today with inverses. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to choose to do angle B first. So again, if I label everything, I've got this is going to be opposite, and then this will be adjacent. So when I look at that, that means if I set that up, that's going to be tangent of B is equal to the opposite 5 divided by the adjacent 9. I'm going to need to do inverse here. So the inverse of a, our B is equal to and the measure of angle B. Let me write that out. Measure of angle B is equal to the inverse tangent of 5 over 9. And again, that's why I plug in my calculator. In this case, I want to run to the nearest degree. So I'm going to get the inverse tangent of 5 ninths is going to come out to 29 degrees after I round it off. I could do one more trick ratio. I can do that for angle C here for finding that last one. But in all honesty, I might as well just do this. Again, since I'm dealing with a right triangle, these are complementary. So that means I can just find the measure of angle C by taking 90 minus 29. So that means the measure of angle C is equal to 61 degrees. Okay. And that's it for today. So our main points we wanted to cover was the fact that with our inverse uh, trigonometry, we can find our missing angles in our right triangles like this. We can use that for solving triangles by finding all the missing sides and, and all the missing angles. Okay. So sometimes we have to use regular trig. Sometimes we have to use the inverse trig. The last thing we talked about today was uh, angle of elevation and angle of depression, how they're related to each other. All right, that's it for today. Take care, everyone.